What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here doing episode 6 of the JavaScript ES6 Arcade Solutions for Code Fights. Uh, today's challenge is Make Array Consecutive 2. And before I move on, let me just ask you to please subscribe and like the video if you've been enjoying the series. And hit that bell and leave comments below. Anyway, let's dive right in. Right, so I'm here at the Make Array Consecutive 2 challenge, which is in the edge of the ocean section of the arcade. Not going to go through that whole process. Again, if you haven't signed up yet, Click the link in the description below, that will give you a nice invite and might get you some free coins. I know it gets me free coins, so do me a favor and do that. Anyway, before we get started, I'm not going to read this description. I want to start off by making this a constant ES6 function. Now, I'm quite guilty for not going full on ES6 on you guys. So this video, I really will go full on ES6. Let's first look at this description. So, Ratiogo, however you pronounce his name, got statues of different sizes as a present from Codemaster for his birthday. Oh, sweet. Each statue having a non-negative integer size, which that means it's just positive or zero. Since he likes to make things perfect, he wants to arrange them from smallest to largest so that each statue will be bigger than the previous one by exactly one. He may need some additional statues to be able to accomplish that. Help him figure out the minimum number of additional statues needed. For statues, uh, 6, 2, 3, and 8, the output should be 3. Because if we look at the smallest number 2 and the largest number 8, he needs 2, 3, 4 is missing, 5 is missing, then he needs 6, and then 7 is missing and 8. So there's 3 missing numbers, so the number here returned should be 3. Uh, some other notes we have to do, this must be done in less than 4 seconds, and our input is an array of integers representing the statues, called statues, these are distinct non-negative integers, meaning they won't be duplicates. Uh, guaranteed constraints, the amount of statues, the statues.length, will not be less than 1 or more than 10. Another constraint is the statue length themselves, the individual integer, will not be smaller than 0 or larger than 20. That's important. Now, the output integer should just be that number over there. Uh, kind of got that point already. So, Let's first start off by thinking what we need to do. The first thing you might think you want to do is sort the statues. But if you think about it, we really don't need to do that. Because in order to work out what's missing, we just need to know the length of the array. And we need to know, which we can get very easily, it's just statues.length. And we need to know the max value and the min value. So we can find out the difference between them two. So in this case over here with our example, we have... Um, 8 minus 2. So it's the maximum value minus 2. That will equal 6. So that means in total there are going to be 6 values of uh, things. Or if we think about it, there might actually, there's actually 7. So we think 2, 3, 4. Sorry, let me split this up a bit. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the amount is actually going to be 6 plus 1. So bear that in mind. So that's actually the... I'm going to make another note here. It's the max minus the min plus 1 is going to be our original amount, the full amount of statues that are going to be needed in a row. So we don't actually need to sort things. We just need to figure that out. And then we just have to say minus the array dot length because... The length of the array is 4 in this case. So if we said 7 minus 4, we get, well, in this case, the 7 minus 4, we get 3. I hope you kind of get what's going on. Uh, we just, we know the amount of statues we already have is 4, and the total amount of statues we're going to need is 7. So the missing number is 3. And that will work for all these different test cases, which I've already tested out. So that being said, I'm going to remove these comments, and we know what's going on now, I hope. So I'm going to calculate the length of the array at the end, but the min and max, we can set the initial max value to zero because we know over here the statue's length won't be less than zero, and we know the min value won't be more than 20, so we set the minimum to 20. Now the next thing we need to do is what you probably think now is we would for loop through, but because I want to do full on ES6, I want to teach you guys something if you haven't been familiar with this yet. We can use an array.map uh, function. So statues.map, this is a really cool ES6 thing, will map through each and every single item in the array, so each statue. So for, in this case, 
it returns, it gives you a value. Oops. This is going to be very useful for React coding later. And now you can do the function of the value. So technically, it's almost like saying the whole for loop going through each time and setting it to i. Instead, i statues at i is going to be statue. Actually, this shouldn't be statues. It should be statue. So for each statue, it's almost like a for each statement. For each statue in statues, do this. So for each statue, I want to check if statue is bigger than max, then we want to set max to statue. Does that make sense? Uh, this is just a shorthanded statement. I mean, you can spread it out into like block codes, but because it's just one statement, we can put it all in one line to make things neater. We want to do the same for a statue is smaller than min. Then let me fix my spacing. Then we want to set min equal to statue. I hope this makes sense to you guys because this, if you understand this, it actually makes a lot of sense and makes your code look a lot cleaner. So the final thing we want to do is return that value that we've worked out. So what we worked out was we want to get the max minus the min plus one. So that gives us the total amount of statues that there will be. And then we minus the amount of statues that we already have, which is statues.length. And this should give us our correct answer. Please work. Yes. So if you see here, here we have four, five, six. Because four is the smallest, six is the largest. If we work it all out, the output is zero. Now, in the same way, here's test four, we have three and six. So this is actually be three, and we're missing four, we're missing five, and we have six. So we're missing two, and the output and expected output is two. So this all works out pretty perfectly, and we can submit, and it will work. So, guys, anyway, I hope you've learned something new today with this mapping function. If not, I hope you know that it's much nicer to use mapping than for looping through everything. So I highly recommend if you ever come across these problems where you don't need to do some specific for loop and you just need to map through an array, use the map function because this is what ES6 is built for, to make things look cleaner and easier and more understandable. So we don't have to worry about you know, indexing at things or anything like that. Anyway, guys, again, if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you disliked it, I'm so sorry, but you can dislike it if you want. And then don't forget to subscribe and leave comments below if you're enjoying this. I think we're going to take a break from the series now and come back later after we do some more React Native tutorials. So if you like that content, head over there. Cheers, guys.